Hey guys, I hope you're doing well during these difficult times. In case you're thinking about getting into flying drones and FPV in general, you might want to watch this video. I'm going to approach it from a complete newbie perspective, just like I was a few months ago. Given with the COVID restrictions, I wanted to immerse myself in a new hobby and I thought, let me try building one of these sports drones that you see a lot on YouTube these days. I'm going to share my experience trying to source these parts, building them and uh, some feedback which I think is really important for first time flyers because you can get so easily lost in the hype and excitement of building one of these drones. So let's get started. I took a while to select which drone kit I'd go for and I settled on the Yashin Tyro 79 which I think is a great starter drone uh, coming in at a decent price point. It's not perfect but it does a lot and I think it's a great bang for the buck. So the first thing I got this obviously from Banggood. I think that's one of the most common places to get these uh, these kits. And uh, keep in mind that you will have to pick your own transmitter and your own receiver because that's not usually included in this bundle. So I settle on the Fly Sky, which I think is a budget replacement to the more popular FR Sky. The only caveat with this is this works on iBus instead of the more popular S Bus. But trust me, it's really simple to set up. Even before you decide to start on this hobby, you have to answer a couple of questions to yourself. How comfortable are you with your basic electronics and uh, uh, soldering and troubleshooting? You definitely need to have a good multimeter with continuity in place and uh, you need to have that soldering iron as your as your as your friend there because you're going to damage a lot of the wiring as you keep crashing it. I really enjoyed building this drone mode and flying it. I am not a good pilot at all, and I think I've crashed this drone at least about 200 times, to say the least. So soldering has to be your friend. You have to be able to know how to troubleshoot this. Keep in mind that you're not going to have every single component that's required bundled into this package. So a good example is a few less uh, standoffs than required should you want to really mount additional layers. Now that was again I would say you can, you can say it was a rookie mistake because you're not supposed to really build a stack higher than what this frame is designed to. I did attempt to raise the frame on standoffs just so that I could get more clearance so I could I could have like multiple layers going on you know so I've got my ESC board I've got my flight controller and then I have my transmitter over here I've taken out the VTX and the camera just because uh, it's not that easy to fly and once you keep crashing this drone the first thing that's going to disappear or at least break off is your VTX transmitter. Now if you watch any videos out there they clearly told you do not run this transmitter without an antenna you can fry it. I've lost two antennas already so for lack of options I've had to take it off. Now Another rookie mistake is to go in for everything at the same time. So I did go and get myself some goggles. Now, and of course a spare battery with all the, the bells and whistles, right? This is absolutely unnecessary if you're starting off. So I got one of these uh, units. I'll plug in the name later and a nice fat 1500 
milliampere battery with the intention of doing some FPV however FPV is not as simple as some of the guys make it sound uh, flying a drone fully on manual like this is hard in itself so I started off by saying okay I want to have everything so I had not a, a two level stack like it is right now but I had a four level stack so I actually raised this frame on standoffs and I had four layers which looked great but every time it fell I would land up snapping the standoffs and you can see these are these are the the left over pieces of all the standoffs that are broken so that was not a good idea even if you get one of these boxes you will have to use them sparingly unless you're an experienced pilot then you can build a nice uh, st stacked uh, drone with maybe four layers the second thing to note with the Tygo 79 I think it's a fantastic drone if you just want to learn a simple acro flying because it comes only with three UARTs and you can finish them pretty fast Another rookie mistake is putting GPS on your drone when you don't understand how it works. So this is the BN220 which is only a GPS module. It works fine but it doesn't really add too much value apart from measuring your speed which in my case is pointless. What I need is something that will help me to semi-automate the flying process. Things like altitude hold and uh, return to home which I couldn't get working. At least return to home. Forget about altitude hold, it's not supported with beta flight so far. You definitely don't need to buy the GPS module. Know the difference between an XT60 connector and an XT30 connector. Because they are definitely different. And if you don't know what you're buying, you'll have to land up buying batteries or converters. And you're just building up all the parts and it's not too costly to buy these parts but it's just the time from the shipping and it takes forever to get to your door and you lose interest so here's another key mistake I, I bought a smoke stopper with XT60s then realized my entire setup is on XT30s so I had to get this one which introduced another couple of weeks delay if you are looking for a budget charger this is a great charger at least so far if you use it right now if you watch tutorials everyone says yeah just connected and things work I have actually fried one of them because I pulled out the battery when it was connected so what I've learned the best approach is you first plug it in let the lights come on and then you plug your battery into the into the charging terminals in my case it's a 3s battery so I'm going to use a PS port. Wait for all the lights to get to green, then put off the mains and then unplug your battery. Do this and you won't bust these circuits up. I have just the, the ESE and the flight controller and I have uh, the receiver. The receiver doesn't fit in uh, well into the frame because it's slightly oversized. So I've kind of improvised here and I've kept it, uh, I've just kept it sticking out a bit and then I kind of wrap a little bit of this plastic, uh, this foam protection over here and then I, I use my battery strap to kind of wrap the whole drone up. That has been working fairly well for me and it keeps the drone from just falling to pieces like it was when I had mounted it all in standoffs. So that's a, I think that's a good tip. You will get typically about three to four minutes of flight time if you use it right. Another good tip for beginners is to, to control your throttle on your transmitter. You don't want to be setting this on 100%. So there are several videos out there that show you how to actually limit what your entire throttle values are and I think it's called dual, dual speeds or something on those lines. 
that helped a lot because if you fly the drone with 100% throttle you are going to crash it or it's just going to disappear in the field a couple of things that you want to do as well when you set up this drone is make sure you enable a uh, ESC uh, beeping uh, because if you crash it in tall grass it's very hard to find trust me I thought people were just making this up but it's very true especially when it gets coated in dust I decided to start off with a 650 milliamps tattoo which I think is a fairly good uh, battery from what I've seen online and uh, seems to hold true to its uh, reputation I've not had any problem with it I've tried to protect it to the best I could so what I've got here happening is a double strap I've got uh, the Yashin strap that came I've used some kind of foam protection that also came with the kit and lined the frame so that most of the impact when it hits is coming on that foam on the side also I've, I've got some uh, protection and then the sandwich is inside and then I've kind of daily chained the second uh, battery strap which holds the entire drone in place so that's how I've run this this gives me a good three three I would say three minutes or, or I would say 50 crashes <laughs> whatever you want to say uh, of flight time and uh, I've charged it a couple of times now with no problems, very predictable, no heating, no issues. That's a good battery. I am also planning to uh, fly this with my 650 milliamp battery because that serves no purpose right now since I'm not using the, the FPV screen. Uh, if you have any suggestions on how I can mount that huge 650 milliamp here battery, do let me know because uh, with these existing straps it's not really possible unless I I sacrifice protecting my transmitter which I don't intend to do this way I think this is a great approach to hold it in place so you know something like that this really holds things in place if I could recommend anything while you're ordering your drone buy a, at least four to five uh, VTX antennas because you are going to lose them unless you kind of you know uh, use the glue gun but I also feel the glue won't really hold it that well but I regret not buying enough of the antennas because I've lost both of mine in the field and now I gotta go and wait for a month till my antennas show up till then I'm flying basically line of sight if I were to do another thing differently, I would just spend a little more and get the BN880, which comes, I think, with the, was it a magnetometer? Or, or base, or barometer, one or two. But it enables you to to bring out INAV, if at all, and experiment with INAV. So, uh, I might consider doing that at a later stage, but for now, this is just gonna sit on the shelf. By the way, it works beautifully with the Yashin Tyro works fine it picks up almost 10 satellites uh, I've never got GPS rescue working unfortunately every time I flip the switch the drone has just crashed on me so I have decided to just take it off and keep this to a bare bones until I really learn how to control the drone fly it you know within a closed space around me I know the experts talk about never using a headless mode because it for an FPV experience it logically doesn't make sense to use headless but if you're flying line of sight which I think every first time pilot should it's probably a good idea to think about headless mode because unless you got really great eyesight at some point when you lose orientation of the drone you really don't know which is the front and the back uh, when it's further away so with headless mode at least you know you can just rely on your sticks to either pull the to pull the drone towards you or at least tilt it towards you the way I would think of it or tilt it forward and that would that would help. I can definitely fly this in my bedroom now uh, without crashing it into the into all the linen around. So but that's of course if I, I can concentrate completely and no one's disturbing me but uh, you know you do get carried away when you take it outdoors and uh, sooner or later it's, you find a drone is in control of you rather than control of the drone 
So I hope you find this video helpful somehow. Let me know if you want any further details uh, that you would like me to cover. I feel there's a lot of resources already out there. So I don't know how much more should I regurgitate the same stuff. But uh, the Eashin Tyro 79, definitely a fantastic buy for the cost if you just want to get started uh, with uh, experimenting with drones. Thanks and have a great day.